let's face it, you need an email list to succeed with your online business. It's a fact, right? But if you're going to start and grow an email list, there are seven things that you must do first. And not doing any one of these things could cripple your list growth. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy Podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. So I've studied email marketing for more than a decade now. Um, I mean, I, I had my first email list back in 2004, and uh, and I've, uh, so 16 years now that I've been studying email marketing and email growing an email list. And the, the thing is, all of these successful marketers that I've studied, they they did all of these seven musts. That I that I said at the beginning. Like now, the bad news is I like for me at least I've failed at all seven of these. Now the good news for you at least is that you don't have to. You can learn from my mistakes and what I've learned about these seven things. So today I'm going to share the seven killer mistakes that people make with uh, growing their list. But I'm also going to share kind of the the reverse of that, which is the seven things that you must do in order to, to really start and grow your email list. A lot of these things are things you need to do before you start, but they're things you can do at any, really at any stage. Uh, before we do that, I want to share a quick listener shout out uh, from, this one is from the Overwhelmed Brain. So there you go. Uh, theoverwhelmedbrain.com. Um, he says, I've been following Matt for years. This is more of the same which is awesome. He says, love that he has a podcast. I've been on a newsletter for years and watched many of his videos. I learned something vital on every episode. Now I listen in the car and everywhere else. Highly recommend. So thank you so much for that awesome, uh, awesome comment there or awesome, uh, review. Now I think that was on, uh, yeah, that was on iTunes. So thank you. The overwhelmed brain. Uh, remember guys, you know, I just gave a shout out to him. You can check him out at uh, the and I remember when you drop uh, your rating and review, and we, we do appreciate that, please do uh, put your, you know, your domain name in there, put your real name so I can give a shout out to you uh, here for, you know, 10,000 plus people. So um, make sure you do that. <laughs> All right. So let's jump in because this is, it's going to be a little bit of a lengthy episode, I think. I don't know. I never know until I get into these, how long they're actually going to be, but uh, there are seven things to cover. And uh, so I want to jump right in and waste no more time here. Um Mistake number one is waiting too dang long to start. Waiting too long to start uh, your email list. And then the must side of that is that you must take quick action now. You need to start now. You know, there's the old Chinese proverb. I quote this so many times. You know, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. So start right now. Start right now. On, uh, on, you know, on growing your email list. If you're at zero, let's get you to 100 real fast. You know, we've got our list launch challenge coming up. Uh, registration is shutting down here pretty soon, depending upon when you're listening to this, either the early bird, uh, the early bird bonuses are going away. Uh, those are worth over $100. Or, you know, um, or it's just shutting down period. We're going to be starting a list launch challenge here coming up on March 18th. So if you're listening to this before March 18th, get signed up at listlaunchchallenge.com. Uh, as far as starting right now, go sign up for convert kit. You know, you can find the link on my toolbox page. I'll include a link in the, in the show notes, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash toolbox. Go get signed up for convert kit. Just, just do it. You know, I mean, the reason I recommend convert kit very simply is that it's the easiest to start with. You can start for free up to some number of subscribers, whatever the number is, it's like a hundred or a thousand, whatever it is, it's more than enough to make considerably more than you'll pay per month. People are like I have to pay what for my email list? No, it's you're paying, you're paying them a fraction of what you're going to make from it. I mean, we make a hundred times more than we pay we, like what we pay convert kit, we make at least a hundred times more every month from the list. So it's, it's just a, it's like paying for like you pay 2.9% for credit card processing. We do, we pay 2.9%. 
I don't look that look at that as an expense. It's it's a cost of doing business. It's like I'm paying them to process the credit card. I can't process the credit card on my own. I can't send, you know, literally we we send probably when you factor in the number of emails that we send to the number of people that we send to, we're sending close to a million emails a month for a few hundred bucks. That is cheap. That is absolutely cheap. So sign up for ConvertKit and, uh, and get started. Like it's the easiest one to get started with. And it also scales with you. And like I said, it's free to start with. So that's the thing. Just do it now. I don't care if you have nobody visiting your website, start building an email list. And we'll, we'll show you how in the list launch challenge, some specific strategies and tactics, but just start now, build an email list of 40, 50, a hundred people. Don't wait to start asking people for their email address. Mistake number two is trying to speak to everyone, trying to speak to everyone. And the converse of this is you must define your avatar. If you try to speak to everyone, this is a key point here. I want you to write this down. If you try to speak to everyone, you speak to no one. If you try to speak to every human being, male and female, young and old, employed and unemployed, kids, no kids, uh, you know, homeowners, renters, you know, CEOs and, and janitors, you, you are you are speaking to no one because nobody is going to retin that there there is no one who resonates with like that kind of universal message. You know, it's why if you, if you look at, you know, there's a reason why in politics, there's a reason why the majority of the effort is focused on getting one's base out to vote. It's because if you can get a hundred percent of your base out to vote, you will win every election. But when you try to speak to everyone, then nobody votes for you because you don't even have a base. Nobody even knows like, wait, am I in his base or not? Does she even like, what does she even stay? I don't know. You know? So if you try to speak to everyone, you speak to no one. And that's the problem. A lot of people think, well, who's your market? Well, it's pretty much every human being on earth. Really? What's your product cost? A thousand dollars. Oh, so all of sub-Saharan Africa is in your audience? Like what? Well, what's your product? Well, I sell testosterone. Who's your audience? Everyone? Really? Women? That's your audience is, is females for, for testosterone. I mean, I get that maybe they're buying it for their husbands, but like, no, your audience is men over 40. And so if you want to learn how to define your avatar, I know I keep going back to this, but uh, when you sign up for the list launch challenge, it's only $25 too, and you're going to get seven days of amazing, amazing training. But if you do nothing else, there's two parts of it. Number one, when you sign up, you get our avatar training for free. We normally sell this for $97. And it's been called by, uh, I forget her name, but Grace, and she teaches Portugal, uh, Portuguese. She went through the List Launch Challenge last year, and she said this avatar training was the best that she's ever seen. It helped her define her avatar. It is the number one thing you can do in terms of, of growing your list is just to know exactly who you're, who you're trying to attract. Uh, you get it for free when you sign up for List Launch Challenge. So you save $72 on it, you know, on the avatar training. Uh, if you do nothing else, just go get that, go through it, and, and then never even attend the challenge. Now, that would be a silly idea because there's a segment and the third lesson that I would also highly recommend. I recommend the whole thing, but I'm saying if you only did two things, there's about a 20 to 30 minute segment on the third lesson. Where we're going to talk about viral headlines where you will learn how to get massive amounts of traffic and attention. Okay, so um, yeah, go sign up, listlaunchchallenge.com. But stop trying to speak to everyone. Get very clear on who you are speaking to, who you are trying to attract to your audience. Mistake number three is trying to write properly and sound professional. Now, this is a mistake in most niches. If your audience is English professors, ignore this. If your audience is like thermonuclear physicists, uh, probably ignore this. But the must here, the third must is that you must define your unique voice. This is your voice. Stop trying to sound like other people. Don't try to, if don't, if you're in the personal development space, don't try to sound like Tony Robbins. I don't know how you could, how many you going to get that much gravel in your throat, you know? Um, <laughs> I mean, but like, don't just stop trying to say the same things to him, you know? Um, uh, if you're in the, you know, whatever space, stop trying to be the next so-and-so be, be you attract people with your unique voice. And you have to get clear on this. 
Once you know your avatar, you know the language that your avatar speaks, you know the, the manner in which that you need to communicate with them, then you get clear on that and you can communicate effectively with them. You know, so what's your natural style? Are you conversational or, or very uh, you know, professional? Are you Ben Stein from Ferris Bueller? Bueller. Bueller. You know, are you are you that or are you uh, are you are you proper? You know, were you raised perhaps in like, you know, uh, an abbey in England, <laughs> you know, or are you conversational? Do you say, you know, a lot like I just did? Are you in your face or, or are you more uh, wrap your arm around a person and, uh, and comfort them? You know, in order to get results from somebody, do you tell them why it's okay to be in their shoes or do you get up in their face and tell them why they need to get off their butt and do what you're telling them to do? Like decide on this and then be consistent. It doesn't matter which one you choose. There's no right or wrong. Conversational, professional, in your face, you know, like whatever, right? Uh, there's no, it's, it, you know, I, people all the time, I used, I used to have a little bit of a Southern accent growing up. And, uh, and when I say growing up until I was like in my mid to late twenties, why? Because I grew up in the South. And it still comes out every now and again. You know, I still, I still say y'all too much. And I used to think it was like a disadvantage to say y'all. I used to think it was a disadvantage to sound Southern until somebody was like, uh, dude, I wish I sounded more Southern. It's interesting. It's unique. I mean, like to this day, I love, I like, as soon as I hear a dude with a British accent, I'm like, I'm going to listen to you. you. You have to be a genius. Why? Because you have a British accent and anyone with a British accent is instantly like 10 times smarter than I am. But the point here is just decide on this voice, decide on your manner of speaking, your manner of communicating, and then stick to it and be consistent with it. Don't be in your face one day and then all, you know, not that way the next. Don't, um, don't read from a script and sound perfect. And then the next day, not read from a script. If you're going to read from a script, read from a script. And if you're going to read from a script when you normally don't, just so you stay on point, learn how to do it right so that you don't sound like you're reading from a script. That's a learned skill, by the way. Uh, I've, I've learned it over, over the years, you know, how to not sound like I am. So mistake number four, you know, so far we've talked about, you, you need to take quick action now, right? Stop, stop waiting. Uh, you need to, you can't speak to everyone. You need to define your avatar and you can't, um, uh, you can't try to sound like everybody else. You know, you can't try to write properly and sound professional. You need to have your own unique voice. Mistake number four is sending emails for the wrong reasons. And, and the, the converse of this, the must side of this is that you must put yourself in the proper mindset. And so for me, that proper mindset is, is serving first. Every email I write, even if it's a sales email where the entire intention of that email is for them to click the link and buy something from me or from somebody else, I still want that email in some way to serve the person reading it. You know, this goes back to the avatar, uh, your avatar. How do you serve someone if you don't even know who they are or what they want or, or what position they're in? What pain are they in? What pleasure do they want? How do you serve them if you don't even know who they are in those things? And so for me, in order to get in this proper mindset so that when I sit down, I usually don't sit when I write emails, but you know, when I stand to write the emails, I do an exercise uh, and I've shared a video where I walk through this. It's a lengthy video where I walk through step by step, but I'll give you kind of an overview here where I, I do this exercise to visualize. I visualize the person opening my email. So how did I, you know, how can I serve them if they don't open the email, right? And what action did I want them to take? Well, I wanted them to open the email. What does that mean? It means I wrote a good subject line. So now I've, you know, projected success to my subject line. And so I visualize them opening the email. I visualize them reading through the email. If there's a part of the email maybe where I, I want them to laugh because I, I make a joke, then I visualize them laughing at the joke. If there's a part of the email where I want them to really have to think, I visualize them thinking. And then I visualize them ultimately clicking the link in the email. And they go to say, uh, let's just say it's a, they're going to a, a podcast 
Now I visualize them clicking the play button on the podcast and listening to the podcast. And then from there, say in the podcast, I'm calling them to, oh, I don't know, uh, join the List Launch Challenge at listlaunchchallenge.com. You know, then I visualize them clicking that link or going to the URL and clicking on, you know, or typing in listlaunchchallenge.com. But I go through this whole visualization and then I even take it so far as when I'm writing most of my copy, especially with products, I visualize them five years down the road. So an example of this, I don't want to talk about my niche, but let's just say you're in, say in the, you're in the weight loss niche. Uh, you're in the health and fitness niche. And, and the five-year version of them is living in an active, healthy life. And, and you have to project that and picture that, picture them playing with their kids. And, you know, maybe, maybe they're a smoker and you picture them not smoking five years from now and maybe even running a, you know, a half marathon or something. And when you picture those things, it puts you in the right mindset to write email copy. But when you go into it with the wrong reasons, which is, uh, I just, you know, I want everybody to love this email and I want, I, and I want to make a lot of money. Um, you know, I want everybody just to click and buy that. That's not, that's not the right purpose. And part of, part of this is, you know, kind of the, the, yeah, you want to serve people, but you also need to understand haters. I heard somebody describe it best, uh, at a mastermind last year that said, the thing you have to understand about haters is that your email, your podcast, your video, your whatever, your Facebook post is a mirror to them and they don't like the reflection. So you have to understand that that no matter what you say, somebody is going to disagree with you. There are very few things that you could possibly send out in an email that everyone would agree with. And you can't please everyone. And so being scared to polarize is what keeps you from really having anybody who's like a tr- who's attracted to you and your message when you polarize you're basically saying you're either with me or against me and the cool thing about that is in business is now some people are with you and they are your tribe and the people who aren't they were never going to buy anything from you anyway and so in a way that being scared to polarize kind of leads to our next mistake which um which is waiting until you have X number of subscribers to send that first email. This is something I see too often. Like they, they, well, I have to wait till I have a hundred subscribers, a thousand subscribers before I, before I start emailing them. Well, no, you must start emailing when you have your first subscriber. You must. I mean, the, like this is, I don't know what's the magic number, right? Is it 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000? The problem is that first person that signed up, it's been a week, a month, two months, three months since they signed up. And so it's just these unnecessary delays, which mean people forget they signed up. <laughs> they, they forget that they ever even signed up. And so, yes, you want to have as big of an audience as possible, but if you keep waiting for some magical number of subscribers, then a couple of things are going to happen. First of all, uh, you're probably never going to send an email. You're just going to be afraid to forever. Well, I only have 800. I'm not going to mail now. I didn't mail when I had 700. Why would I mail when I have 800? Why would you mail when you have 5,000? What is the point of getting an email subscriber if you're not going to actually, oh, I don't know, email them, right? And so they forget that they signed up in the first place. And so then they ha- then you have this lower engagement when you finally do send out your emails, they're not expecting to hear from you. And so let's just say you wait till you have 500, 400 of them already forgot they ever even signed up. Not only do they not open your email, they mark you as spam and unsubscribe. And so you want to follow through on the commitment you've made to your current subscribers and give them what they're looking for. Well, why would I write this blog post? I only have 17 people. Why would I waste it on sending to those 17 people? First of all, serve those 17 people with excellence. Second of all, you can always send it to the next 17 people and the next 17 people. I still send new subscribers to content that I created five years ago. The other thing is those 17 people, they might share emails with their peers and they might give you good feedback. Oh, and also you're going to screw some stuff up. You're going to make a lot of mistakes when you have 17 people. You're going to make a lot of mistakes when you have 100 people. And wouldn't you rather make some mistakes when you have 17 or 100 people than when you have 17,000 or 100,000? 
But by waiting to send those emails, you're limiting any list growth potential that comes from referrals. And you're limiting any feedback that you can get and any mistakes that you can kind of get out of the way when you're first starting out. That's why you should start sending as soon as possible so you can learn what your audience likes and dislikes. Uh, Also, you get to kind of grow your list because it happens naturally and you keep those subscribers coming back for more. The other fun thing is you learn about your audience when you only have 100 or 200 of them. You learn about them. You only got 100, you probably know half of them by name. Half of them probably have the same last name as you. But you learn about them. And so you can have an intimate relationship with them that develops over time and you they become your avatar. Kind of goes back to that. Your avatar is your avatar, but then those people also kind of meld in with that avatar. So mistake number six, and by the way, you know, if you want to get that, those first 17 or first hundred or 200, and you want to get started and just like get the ball rolling, right? Go to listlaunchchallenge.com and sign up. Uh, we're starting here soon and I don't want you to miss out. I want you to be a part of this because we're going to absolutely completely like rock your world in terms of what we're going to help you do growing your list. So mistake number six is having an inconsistent schedule. Now, must, must number six is you you must plan your content, okay? When you first start out, you need to plan content. Otherwise, you're inconsistent, and that's a huge mistake. Uh, huge mistakes? That's a huge mistake. Um, so what ends up happening is when you're the inconsistently, inconsistency, man, this is hard. I'm recording this podcast episode at the end of a very long work day. Uh, and so I think I shouldn't do that. Um, but when you, what this looks like in consistency is that one week you send four emails, the next week you send one, the next week you send five, the next week you send none, you know, you're, you're constantly changing the days and, and, and we have a fairly consistent schedule. Like I, we always email on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We always send unopens either on Fridays uh, on two of Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Now, do we always mail uh, on Mondays? No. Do we sometimes? Yep. If we have a reason to, do we all, what about Wednesdays? Nope. But sometimes we do. And so like when you're all over the map and you, you, you go like a week and a half without emailing and then you send back to back emails and it's just, it's a bad thing, right? It just, people don't know what to expect. They're like, I, I don't even know if I want to be signed up for this because you know, wow, he went like seven days without emailing me. And then he emailed me three things in a row. And now it's been, now he, and then he went like 10 days and then he emailed me. What is going on with this guy? It just seems unprofessional and people need to understand you are running an online business. You're not running a hobby, you're running a business. And so they need to understand that there's some level of expectation that they, you know, some level of consistency. And so we do vary things up. You know, I mentioned like to unopens, sometimes we mail, we'll mail to Tuesday unopens on, on Fridays, but what if we have something else on Friday? You know, we're promoting something, so we'll wait till Saturday. Uh, Sometimes we just vary it based on uh, some testing. Sometimes we vary it just to have some variance. So it's a little bit outside of the normal. I've talked about this before where, you know, um, you want to, uh, uh, you want to, you want to have a pattern disrupt. You know, if you never email on the weekends and you suddenly send an email on a Saturday night, it disrupts a pattern and people are like, what the heck? But you can't do that if you don't have some sort of a pattern. So occasionally we'll just disrupt the pattern and we'll send unopens on, uh, on a Saturday morning. You know, and then we'll send again on a Sunday afternoon. You know, other times we'll occasionally we'll even um, send unopens. You know, on a on a Tuesday or Wednesday. You know, just for fun, just for kicks and giggles, just to mix things up. And we'll insert emails here and there. And when we're doing, you know, a big promotion, like say for a webinar on a Thursday afternoon, we'll mail on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning, and then Thursday early afternoon about that that webinar. We don't normally mail about the same thing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But it's, an, you know, probably four times a year we do. So just don't, uh, don't be inconsistent and have a plan. Create a plan so that you can look out when you create that plan and it has you mailing every Tuesday and Thursday. It's real easy just to interject something on a, on a Friday or a Sunday or a Monday. It's really easy to do that. But when you don't have things planned out weeks in advance at a minimum, 
then yeah, you're going to be inconsistent because life's going to get in the way, I promise you. And the mistake number seven is not having an awesome lead magnet. And, and the must of this would be you must have an awesome, attractive, amazing lead magnet. Like we talked in depth about it in the last episode and we, we covered even more in depth that, you know, the first lesson in List Launch Challenge, which you can join at listlaunchchallenge.com, is all about creating that lead magnet. So I don't want to go super in depth because you can go back and listen to a little bit about it, uh, you know, in the last episode, episode 331, where I share the five reasons why, you know, you need to have an email list. That episode was called, do you, I think it's called, do you, do you need an email list to be successful at affiliate marketing? Uh, but like I said, we go really in depth and I walk you through step by step, you know, in the list launch challenge, but you've got to have an attractive lead magnet. You know, there's a reason why it's called a lead magnet. You are magnetizing, you are attracting leads and you will not do that. You will not attract people just to sign up for your newsletter. You're not going to attract people just like, oh, I just love giving my email address to people. That's not how the world operates. So you want to have an attractive lead magnet. And we share this formula in the List Launch Challenge, but I kind of give you the breakdown here. It's called the number noun that verb results. And we walk through tons of examples, but it basically, you know, that's the simple way is it's, you know, seven, uh, one, one of my created for a friend of mine, he runs a, a Christian uh, website and it, it was called, it was, I think it was seven or 10. I think it was 10. I think it was, it was 10 prayers that unlocked heaven on earth. You know, that is the, that's the name of it. it's seven foods that, you know, burn fat quickly. Um, seven, you know, seven herbs that grow indoors. So you don't have to you know, so you save hundreds of dollars a year on earth, something like that. You know, those are the type of lead magnets that you want to create something that's very attractive. And so those are the seven mistakes and the seven must. Now again, waiting too long to start, trying to speak to everyone, trying to write properly, sound professional, uh, writing for the wrong reasons, waiting until you have X number of subscribers to send that first email uh, having an inconsistent schedule and not having an awesome lead magnet. And on the opposite side, the things you must do, you must take action right now. Like take some sort of an action. Sign up for convert kit. You know, do sign, do something, right? Register for the list launch challenge so you can start growing your email list at listlaunchchallenge.com. You must define your avatar. You must define your unique voice. Get very clear on that. Decide on it and be consistent. You must put yourself in the proper mindset. You know, do that visualization exercise that I shared. I'll I'll share the link to the video that goes in depth on that so you can see a little bit more about that. I'll share that in the show notes. You must start emailing when you have that first subscriber. You must plan your content, be consistent, and you must have an attractive lead magnet. So as I've been sharing these things today, my guess is that something has come to your mind. And I want to know, what are you going to do right now? What are you going to do immediately to get started the right way? To fix maybe what you've done the wrong way? What's your next right step? What is it? Go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash TAG. That's for the affiliate guy, 332. This is episode 332, believe it or not. mattmcwilliams.com forward slash tag 332. And share what you're going to do uh, right now. You know, something has come to your mind. Also, check out the List Launch Challenge at listlaunchchallenge.com. Get registered for that before it's too late so you can start and grow your email list right now. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguy.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguy.com. Who knows? might end up being featured on this podcast.